Hey everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today I'm having fun with Easel and the X Car. One of the questions that I've had to ask from one of the subscribers is how does the picture frame app work in Easel? And today, this is a quick little frame that I had made, threw something in there real quick so that you could see it. And we're gonna be using this app right there to be able to make the picture frame. And it has quite a bit of versatility to it that I think that you're gonna find very interesting. To do this demonstration today, I'm going to use a piece of scrap MDF, and that's medium density fiberboard. And to be able to start this project, I'm going to cut this five inches by seven inches, which typically is a standard size frame. Now these frames that you can make is really anything that you want, but I have a piece of scrap here that's going to work just fine. So five by seven is the size that I'm going to be using. Now that's going to be the outside of the frame. The inside for the picture portion would be four inches by the six inches. And that, of course, we're going to use the X-Carve and the Picture Frame Rabbit app to be able to cut that out. Now I want to point out to you that you can cut these frames any size that you want. Because typically you're going to have a 4 by 6, maybe a 5 by 7, or an 8 by 10, 11 by 14, or even if you do some of the document type uh, sizes, 8.5 by 11. But here's the thing, you can make your picture frame any size that you wish when you're making your own. You don't have to just stay with the standard size. I'm going to be using the medium Starbond glue along with the tape and of course the accelerator to make this dry virtually instantly. And let's see here, the sides of this really, this is equally as good as this side. And again, this is seven inches by five inches, and we're going to do the four by six cutout for the picture frame right there. Well, the tabs are actually built in, and I haven't seen a way to be able to reduce and eliminate those tabs, but I still want to be able to use the glue and the tape method to be able to hold this down. So no clamps will be necessary. And I just use this kind of like a little guide so I know where that tape goes. And like I said before, it doesn't need to take a whole lot of glue. I use the block as a guide just to be able to determine how long of a bit of glue that I need. So I'm just putting some little drops in. Then I'm going to spray this with the accelerator and position it right down on top of the tape. Just so you know, I do have some guidelines on the waste board. They're just incredibly hard to see at this point. We'll press that down, hold it for just a moment or two. That will dry, and this will be ready to be able to uh, carve this out. And that's it, that's good and secure. For this demonstration today, I'm using an eighth inch straight bit to cut this picture frame out. Keep this in mind, I could use a eighth inch down cut bit or even a quarter inch down cut bit. Really, it doesn't matter. You can choose whatever bit that you have to be able to cut this out. I'm just choosing to use the eighth inch straight bit to cut this project out. Now to carve this first thing out, we're gonna use the bottom left hand corner to be able to cut this. And I have the bit setting right there on the XY zero position. After going through the entire checklist and getting everything set and attaching the dust boot, I went ahead and hit the start and to carve this out. Now I wanted to be able to show you the end product and then we're going to talk in detail about how I got to this point. And just for those who do not have a dust boot on your CNC machine, it makes a world of difference. You can see that this is capturing probably about 98% of all the dust, and that's a fantastic thing. It makes cleanup so much easier when you already have all of the dust captured. The way this picture frame rabbit is actually designed is that it's cutting down 3 eighths of an inch. Now this material is a half inch uh, thick, 
So with it cutting down three-eighths of an inch, it will be leaving one-eighth of an inch as a reveal. When you flip it over and you're looking at the picture, you'll see that eighth inch. As for the depth being three-eighths of an inch, that allows for all the different items that needs to go in there. It's not just a picture. You have to put in the glass, the picture, sometimes a mat, and of course you're going to use a foam board or a piece of cardboard as far as the backing. At this point, it has finished carving down three-eighths of an inch. Now it's coming back to the surface and it's beginning to do the cutout. And it's going to carve down now all the way through and that's going to carve that half inch thick and that's going to create the picture frame window. At this point, it's all done. I take a putty knife and just break that glue loose and it will just lift right off. Now here it is coming off the machine and you can see how this cut out. And on the back side, you can see the four tabs that were holding this center part in. Let me cut this out and I want to show you how this actually looks. Ordinarily, I would not use the tabs, but in looking through this particular app, I don't see the opportunity to be able to remove the tabs from the project because this does require just a little bit of extra work. Not only do you have to cut the tabs loose for this window to drop out, but it also means that you have to be able to do a little bit of sanding. So there's the frame itself. Let me just clean up these edges. And on the back side, you're going to see how this rabbit cut down and left this portion right down here for the pitcher to be able to sit in and, of course, the various components. I want to clean up this edge a little bit where these tabs were. Then I'm going to show you how I made this and how it actually works. I want to show you exactly how I set this up. And to begin with, I came over to this area and this is set for the seven inches wide and five inches on the Y inch axis. And this is a half inch thick. So those are the parameters that I set for the outside of the frame. And you can really make this any way that you want, but this is what I chose to make this small frame. So with that set, then I come over here to the apps menu. Click on it, scroll down, and you will find the picture frame rabbit right here. Now there's some parameters that we have to work with in here. Now the first one is the actual width of the glass. And that is this right here. Now the glass that I had was four by six inches. And actually after I had looked at it, it was just a hair less than that. But what I like to be able to do, if I have a piece of glass that's exactly, that's exactly four inches by six inches, I want to make my opening just slightly larger. So in this case, I made my opening a sixteenth of an inch larger. So that's going to be 6.0625. And that gives me the sixteenth of an inch gap. Now, after playing with this app for quite a bit, I realized that it has a built-in clearance, but it's only a 32nd of an inch. And for me, that's just a little bit too tight of a tolerance. And on this one, it's going to be the same thing, 4.0625. And as a result, this gives me the outer opening of this window at 4 inches by 6 inches plus that 16th of an inch. <laughs> Don't forget, there's an extra 32nd of an inch built in, and that's okay, that'll work just fine. The next two areas, they reveal width and they reveal depth. That's the area that causes people a lot of problem. Now I have this set at an eighth of an inch for both of those, and let me show you on the picture frame what that actually looks like. So let's look at this. This was the five by seven, so this is seven inches from here over to here, and from this point to this point was five inches. As far as the parameters for this uh, setup inside of here, this is the width of the glass. This is gonna be the 6.0625, which gives me an extra 16th of an inch. Now down here is the important measurements. Those last two parameters was that reveal width. This distance right here, that is the reveal width. And that was set at the 
0.125. So that is an eighth of an inch right there. And then that last one was the reveal height. And if we look here, it's an eighth of an inch from the face. So if you turn that over, this is the face of the frame. And the thickness of this, which is the reveal height, is actually an eighth of an inch. So that's how these parameters are set up. So why do we have this so deep? You can actually set this any depth that you want. You can make this frame thicker here or you can actually design it where you can put some extra details on the outside of the frame. It doesn't have to be just square like this. The important thing is you want to be able to establish this so that everything that you're putting into the frame, the glass, the pitcher, the mat, the cardboard on the back, or the uh, foam pieces to be able to hold it in, all must be able to fit in to this space. So there you have the actual picture frame on the set parameters that we had set. Now you have four parameters that you're actually establishing and you have the definitions. The one that causes the most confusion is that reveal height because that's actually measured from your waste board up. Now let's take a look at it when we import this in to the easel. So this is the actual tool path that you have set. And if you look at it closely, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. You can see the gray area. That's actually the one that's carving down three-eighths of an inch. It's an eighth of an inch wide, so it's the same as the bit. And then that black line also is an eighth of an inch because of our bit, and that's cutting all the way through the material down to the waste board. I'm using a piece of white foam board to be able to use for the backing, and I measured this out four inches by the six inches. And I'm just taking a utility knife and cutting this out. Now, as far as the picture, we're going to keep it real simple. This is going to be my picture. There we go. To assemble this, we'll just need to drop the glass down inside of here. And you can see how that rabbit joint that reveal holds that in place. And then we drop my picture in there, just like that. And then we have either foam backing or the cardboard backing that will go in there. And that holds it just right. And that will give you the actual picture in the end. Now, as far as holding it, there's a number of different types of pins that you can push and put into here. Let me show you a couple. Now the easiest type are little push pins like this. And what you would do is just literally put it right down there on top of the cardboard, and then we'll take a screwdriver and push it in. And this is all I'm using, and just a flathead screwdriver to be able to put this, and yeah, it's magnetic, put it right there where you can push on those two pins and shove it right in place. Now I'm only gonna use two right now. I can put this one down right here. And push it right into position. And that will hold it just fine. And that makes it where my picture is framed and ready to be hung up. Another way is to use very small little pin nails to be able to put them in place. And you would do the same thing, only this time you could use the screwdriver in conjunction with a hammer and just tap them in. And that works well also. And the last method is to use a gun like this that will actually put these framing points in. And these framing points look like this. And they go into this gun and then you can just shoot them right into position. And to me, this is the easiest, best way to do it, but everybody doesn't have one of these type of staple guns. And you can see how that holds it in place also. So there are several different methods to be able to hold the picture frame back in. So let's look at this one more time. I'm gonna zoom this in just a little bit closer. 
And there's one more thing that I want to point out. You have these little log bones right here at the end, so that glass will drop in and you have a place for that corner of that glass to ride. Let's delete this. And let's go back to the app itself, right over here. We'll scroll down again and we'll highlight this. Now we have this set at the four, six inches to four inches, but I want to talk a little bit more about this part. On this reveal width, you may find that you don't want just an eighth of an inch, that you want this to be further back. And that's okay, you can do that. So if you wanted this to sit back a quarter of an inch, you could do that by just typing it in. And then the reveal depth. This may not be what you want. You may want this thicker or thinner. And this distance here is a big important factor. Now I know that this worked quite well with this being an eighth of an inch. And this actually would be three eighths of an inch. So I like the opening where it will actually sit in here and be just have some extra room. I don't like it tight. These little dog bones up here at the top are really nice to be able to have because when that glass drops in, it has a place for that little corner to be able to go and that's a nice feature. But I do like to have this width just a little bit larger than the glass itself and that should be about a sixteenth of an inch. So keep that in mind when you're setting this up. Measure your glass first and then put in this measurement of the glass plus about a sixteenth of an inch and that will make it where the glass will drop in very easily. Now this reveal width, we just said we were going to change it. Now this currently is an eighth of an inch, but if this is not enough of a reveal, you can type in a quarter of an inch or you can type in anything that you want. So I just put in a quarter of an inch for the example right here and that would give me the quarter of an inch reveal. Now this portion right here, again, is the eighth of an inch that is showing here from the face, from the face of the frame. And that's what's gonna be face down on your table. And that eighth of an inch is gonna come up this way. If you want that to be thicker, then all you have to do is change that to any number that you want. I think quite frankly, for most applications, that eighth of an inch would be good. You're going to need about three eighths of an inch. So if you have a frame material that's actually thicker than this half inch, then that's good. You can set that up where you still have the three eighths of an inch. You can make this reveal actually a little bit thicker. And then you can do some more decorative things on the outside because you can put different cuts on the outside of this frame to be able to make it very nice and decorative. Plus, if you made this wider, you could put in text here that you could cut into with the uh, CNC machine also. So you have a wide variety of different options to be able to do this. Right now, I'm gonna set this at 0.2 of an inch. And we're going to import that in. And then let's take a look at it. If you look over here at this portion, you can see how this now is quite a bit wider than that original version. And if you look over here on the design screen, you can see that gray portion that's now a quarter of an inch versus what we had before of being the eighth of an inch. As far as the reveal height, take a look at that black line. That is the line that's cutting all the way through. Now it's difficult to see it here, but that was changed from an eighth of an inch to 0.2 of an inch. When I highlight everything, you can still see the tabs, and the tabs will be there to be able to keep that center window from falling out and getting in the way of the CNC machine when it's cutting it. So it's a nice little feature to have. Now granted, I typically don't use the um, tabs, but they're there. Use them. I don't see the option over here on this uh, drop-down window to be able to remove them. 
I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. It was a lot of fun to be able to make this very simple little frame. Now this little frame is really designed for a four by six picture, but you can put all kind of different size pictures in frames that you make in your shop. And it's really, I think you've been able to see real easy to be able to do. Now, if you like this video, by all means, give me a thumbs up and don't forget, hit that little subscribe button right down there in the corner and that bell notification. I'm going to be doing quite a few other videos just like this one to be able to help you out and learn how to be able to effectively use your CNC machine as well as your lasers and 3D printers. I also want to give a very special thank you to all the Patreons out there. I really appreciate your support and I would love to be able to hear from you and see what type of projects that you'd like to see also. And for everyone else out there, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you watching the video. That's what keeps this channel going. If it wasn't for people out there watching, the algorithms would not be suggesting and recommending to other people to be able to watch this. So again, thank you very much. So for now, I'm going to say bye-bye, and I can't wait to see each and every one of you in the shop real soon.